good morning to one and all. Um, I know I promised it's at uh, Langley Green, but uh, Langley Green became a Langley Wheel. Um, they told me it would just be nice little drizzly stuff that turned out to be fucking wobbling down for. Uh, that goes to show one thing, you can never trust a weatherman. Uh, but uh, we are going to do the Q&A video diary. Well, hopefully, we'll get up to Alsager. If we don't get up to Alsager, it'll be all done here and back at Rouge Lee. What are you, are you focusing on my hat? No, Trent Valley. Oh, Trent Valley. The side behind you. The side behind me. This, yeah. This, this, this place right here. Yeah. But um, no, all you YouTubers, you Facebookers, You've sent in your questions, some of them a bit um, outrageous and random, but they are all written down here. Don't look. So I'm not zooming in. Good. I think we'll start off with a generic question first. What do you think? Yeah. Let's start with a generic question. Uh, let's have a look. We'll start off with him. YouTube user, young trade enthusiast. <sighs> yes, thank you for sending that in. And his question is very simple. Why this? Why this hat? Well, oh. the story behind this hat is that um, it was back at work when I was working. Um, we were going to take part in something called the Three Peaks Challenge. Now, for those who don't know what it is, it's the three biggest peaks in the UK. Snowdonia, Scalpel, Pycamp, Ben Nevis. Do all that in one day. Is that the one with the uh, trains really to them? Yes, it is. That's we uh, get that train sometimes in Wales because uh, I think last time we go was it yeah. last time. Yeah, we got it in Wales with when well, it was skip 13 record uh, 12 yeah uh, but uh, that is basically what the three peaks is and this hat was supposed to be for that hat for that uh, but then we never went um, and then I left work I won't say why I left work but um, they never went to this hat back so this hat is my winter hat. It's nice and warm in the winter time. Although it's a nightmare because sometimes it needs to turn down. I don't apologize for the colour, but hey, you see me in the dark. <laughs> That's a good reason to have this hat. In the summer you'll see me with my blue Italian hat on that it's got a nice little peak on the front that'll stop the sun coming into my eyes. Get the sun in my eyes and I can't see shit. So that is that question. Thanks for sending that in. There'll be more after this. Right then, still here at Rooster Valley, they cancel our train, knobs. Uh, but it's time for a Facebook uh, question, not a YouTube question, a uh, Facebook uh, rail disruptions. Uh, Tayside Trains, my boy Ross, hope you're well. Uh, he asks three questions. First question is, uh, what's your favourite TOC? Well, I'll tell you who's not my favourite TOC. Favourite freight class? I don't really have a favourite freight class. I have to say freight it's got to be the 37. What who? The 37? You like the 37? Yeah, I like the Hellfire. I tell you what, the best version of those is the 90s. They are extremely Hellfire. But they are the best. And then he goes, uh, my favourite freight class. And uh, time for yet another question. We're still here at Rouge Trail Valley. We're going to be here for a, a little bit longer, yeah? Uh, if you have YouTuber, YouTuber. I'm going to go with London Tube Lovers. Two questions. Um, his first question, what is my favourite tube stock? S-Stock. I am going to say S-Stock. I like the S-Stock. If it wasn't the S-Stock, it was the A-Stock. 
It wasn't the A stock, it was the 2009 stock. But all three of them stocks are absolutely bloody lovely. They all make a very nice noise. Hello. Um, 2009 makes a real lovely noise, the S stock makes a fantastic noise with these, and the A stock, how could you not love the A stock? The A stock was the A stock. Um, and his second question was, have you ever thought of doing Harrow and Wheelston? The answer simply is yes, but we never will. Because what the London Middle, it is London Middle to run that station, isn't it? Or is it? I think so, yeah. Uh, London Overground, a little generic Pendolino going past. Uh, it's either London Mid or London Overground, but basically they fenced off the slow from the fast, which they're perfectly entitled to do. I'm not going to have an argument with them over that. But for what I know, what I've heard of other people, Harrow is full of jobs worse. Um, and while it's full of jobs worse there, you can take our own wheels and then you can shove it up your proverbial. In fact, I tell you what, that might be a good time to do Toby Connor's question. Because Toby, uh, my mate Toby on Facebook, he asked me, explain the term jobs worth. Well, I don't know the meaning of the term jobs worth, but if you stop the video right here, I will find somebody who does know the meaning of it. Hello, and this is the same that the old lost mashes, Ian Paul, not. <laughs> it's his sign pool here. The brother of Ian Paul. As you know me, I do sign pool for British Reality Journeys, which you can subscribe over on YouTube of other child sign trains. Anyway, I'm here to explain the words jobs worth. Basically, a jobs worth is a person who uses their job description in a deliberately uncooperative way. Thanks, Captain Connect. <coughs> or who seemingly delight in actions on an obstructive or unhelpful manner, basically. In other words, it's a person who thinks they're better than the rules. Yeah? Yeah. And I'll walk back into here now. Bye. Chris, I don't know what happened to me. Then I morphed into Simon Paul for a second. God, that felt funny. I felt dumber. But hopefully, Toby, that answers that question for you. Right. Uh, while we're here on 351.13, heading off to um, Olsager. I'm going to go to Olsager, get that out of the way. Perfect opportunity to do it. Um, another YouTube question. Um, Sam Cooper Bennett, my good mate Sam, um, asked me, what is my favourite class bloco of all time? So yeah, and that's for my specific, he's asked for all time. And to ask a favourite class of loco of all time is a pretty hard decision because there are so many great locos that have come along and revolutionised the railways. I mean, the 43, the class 43 HSC, that revolutionised it in one way. The Deltic revolutionised it in a certain way. Throughout history, you can go through all the locos and you can say that helped this, that helped that. But to pick a favourite class is such a hard job. But I am going to go with the class 43, the HST. Without the HST, where would modern express passenger trains be? For example, if the 43 wasn't invented, would we still have the 350-90 Pendolinos? Would we have the 91 set? Would we have the 90 and the Mark III set for Great Angular? If we didn't have the Class 43, what would companies like Great Western, Virgin, East Coast, National Express, what would they have done without the, the HSC? So for all time, I would have to say the Class 43, the HST, it's done so much for the railway and I think it's still got a little bit more to give. Right, we've uh, arrived at Alsager, it's a bit wet out there so we won't uh, bother with that. 
Uh, we've come here because there are some diverts on today. They've uh, shut the West Coast main line between Stafford and Crewe. Uh, no, it's Rugey and Stafford. Rugey and Stafford, sorry. Um, so they're sending some of the Pendolinos this way to get to Crewe, up through the uh, cord via uh, Stoke-on-Trent, mm. and then through around here to get to Crewe. Um, going to do a couple of Facebook questions now. Uh, first one from Zach Griffin. Uh, my good mate Zach, uh, who lives down south. Uh, his first question is, do I like ducks? Quack, quack. What, what do you mean, something like this? <laughs> or maybe you mean something like this? <laughs> uh, but no, uh, I do like ducks. Perfect weather for ducks as well, isn't it? <laughs> Lovely weather. Um, his second question is, how much was the hat? Um, the hat was a freebie. Um, if work don't want the hat back, touch it on work. That's all I've got to say about that. Right then. I know when I said I'd answer any question, this is probably taking it a bit too far. But uh, my good mate Alex Roberts on Facebook, we'll just make sure we've got nothing coming, which we haven't, uh, sent four questions to me. Um, first question is, which celebrity do you want to shag? Hmm. <coughs> yep, I'd do her over and over again. And why are the barriers coming down? Oh, well, we'll have a look at the barriers in a second. Um, opinion, he asked for my opinion on the people on Rail UK forums. Um, there are some people on the Rail UK forums who are alright. There are other people like George Yorkie, Mojo, XC Driver, and other people who are complete and absolute tossers, and they should go and fucking throw themselves in front of the next train. Do everyone a favour. Um, how many brothers do I have? Uh, too many. Um, it's an old joke that I hear every time someone asks me that question. Uh, my parents obviously didn't hear with contraception. Uh, but no, five brothers I've got. I've got Simon, Martin, Luke, Michael, Stephen, you'll never see any of Stephen, and two sisters, Meg and Sophie. That'll be the only time they're ever mentioned on my video. Um, and his last question, who do I hate out of all rail enthusiasts? Pretty simple, one word, five letters. Snook. And I'll explain why later on. Right then, we are on the other side of Alsage and Dell, on Alsage Station. Um, next uh, question. No. Uh, comes from Amtrak Harry. Um, Alright mate, two questions. Uh, first thing you ask is, how busy are trains now in 1992? Now remember, 1992 I would have been nine. And there were some pretty full trains back then. I think Crikey, when well, we had the local service to Stafford, that was busy as fuck. I mean, I know some of the North Wales trains who we went up for a holiday in North Wales, they were terrible. Oh, they were stopping at Stafford. They were stopping at Stafford. That's just going back in the old days. There's Birmingham Stafford. Well, Birmingham Stafford to Hollyhead. But, Compared to now, there, there are some horribly full trains out there. I mean, I don't need to say they first Great Western. You could probably reel off a list of trains that are full on that service, as well as London Midland and Arriva. Trains nowadays are fuller than I would say 20 years ago, easily. Um, some lines are all right, some lines are terrible, though. Uh, and that's where We've got to bring in extra carriages and that to sort the shit out. Um, he then asks, um, have I ever ridden on Grand Central on the East Coast Main Line? Yes, because we did Grand Central from York to North Allerton. Check out the video diary for uh, York that day. Did I do one for that day? I think you did. I think I did. Um, Saturday as well. It was a Saturday. Saturday the 27th of April, I think it was. 23rd or 27th. 23rd or 27th, I'm not quite sure. Um, no, actually, 21st or 28th. 
Because mm. uh, it's the 20th next year. Because the 20th. The 20th of April is when we're going to do another Grand Central ride, but this time we're going to take in the whole stretch from King's Cross to York. We found an absolute dirt cheap ticket and we're going to take advantage of that dirt cheapness. So that is that, guys. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, that was the last question from here. I've uh, got a couple more, but I'll do them a bit further back home. You see, we're on the uh, Turbo Star now, 170, 509, it's going to take the battery route to town. Um, you can see, probably see the uh, London train still here. It's got to wait here for the uh, passengers to come from Stafford. Um, my last Facebook questions come from uh, Chris Hyam. Uh, his first question is, how long do you plan where to go? And that all depends on where we go. If it's, say, local it could be anything between the next day to about a month in advance something like that but if it's the long distance journeys that i do on my own they could be anything from three to six months in advance i mean you wouldn't believe it now but we're already planning one of our holidays later in the year august now so that's eight months we're planning we planned scotland the second we ended our Scotland um, holiday this year uh, but that leads nicely on to his next question because he asked where are, where are we going next year well next year I keep saying this it's bigger better and everything else as well some old favorites are coming back some new stations are coming in Red Hill Hall he's the first two new stations they're actually doing the first long distance trip that I do um, there's going to be some New stations down south, new stations up north. It's got a better timetable now. We got we got a brand new better timetable, so we can help out. We stay out longer as well. There goes the Desi, and that's left early. That has surely left early. What time is it? I don't know. Um, Could be any time. Any time. We don't know, but yeah. uh, but no. And next year we got two holidays planned. Uh, the Scotland trip will be moved forward to April uh, to accommodate the uh, Great Britain Rail Tour that uh, goes around annually. And the summer will be, we're going to the southwest. Uh, well, we're not actually going to southwest, but we're going to the Bristol area, making Bristol our base, and we're going all around some of the hidden areas of the Severn and Solent region. Um, so that is something to look forward to. Um, the usual all-day freight days will be back. Um, trips down to London as well we'll be back but uh, we're going to try and do some new state we're also going to do next year uh, some line side locations um, I know people have been bugging Simon to do well they've been bugging all of us to do some line side and we saw an opportunity to do one line side uh, with our freight master crew next year uh, so we'll get that done and well actually if you go onto my Facebook page you'll actually see the list of where we're going next year. Um, what I'll do is I'll make um, some notable events put on here, some notable dates if anyone wants to uh, pop down and have a bar banter. Uh, so that is that, Chris. And now it's on to Rugeley Town. Right then, we are back on Terra Firma, Rugeley Town, our home station. And uh, that is all, well, it's not all the questions because I have one question left. The best to last. The best question has been left till last. And it comes from my mate, Jason, uh, YouTube name, uh, The Enthusiast one-on-one. -on -one. He's not a enthusiast, he's THE enthusiast. And his question is a very, very simple one. And a bit personal. Why? Do I hate William Snook so much? I did say that I would answer anything. And anything I am going to answer. Those who are friends with him should turn off the video right now because I'm about to get as graphic as I want to bloody be and ain't no fucker gonna stop me. No joking here, this is all serious. Bye, piss off. To start with, 
Jason and fellow YouTube watchers of the masses, I didn't have a problem with him. Okay, I'd heard a few things about him, but to be honest, that was his business. And then I heard everything that he was doing. He was giving out duff information. He Serving. was sending people on wild goose chases. He was being this, that, and the other. And quite frankly, I had to go see for myself. Hence is why I did the um, documentary where I went to crew. You're forgetting something. Why am I forgetting something? Before it all started. Oh yes, before it all started. I was tr there telling people not to believe this guy, this, that, the other, and he was giving me a barrage of abuse. No, what about crew when um, the sign thing? Oh yeah, I forgot about that as well. Is he it... might not remember it because his brain probably doesn't process things like that. But I went down, me and Simon, I think you... No, remember, just you. Just me. He, I went down for the Loon Rivers Trust Special. This is back in September 2010, I believe. September, October 2010. And at Crew Station, if anyone knows Crew Station, Platform 12, people towards the London end go past the sign no matter what. So I was going to do that, but he was standing there and he was being absolutely arsy about it. And he told me to get back. And I told him, well, there people, have... and he said, don't care, you will get back. So I thought, okay, I'm not going to argue with you, boy. And then he fucking shouts across God knows how many tracks. It was about four or five tracks to people on platform five and six. Six and seven. Six and seven, yeah. And he was telling them to get back because there was a policeman there. There was no policeman there. I had friends over there who confirmed there was no policeman. He was just being a total, absolute, you know what. And that's how it's all started. That is how it's all started. And it's continued on from there. These last eight months, before the April, it was banter back and forth. But then, he started getting personal. He started getting so fucking personal, it was unbelievable. I went to Manchester Piccadilly, and I don't care now, I will name a fucking shame. And his friend, Phil Hibbard, he took a photo of me and put it on Snook's Facebook gen site. And I got shitloads of abuse for that. Do you have the evidence? We have the evidence, Phil. Don't deny it. Then, his friend on his site as well, Robert Bray, took a photo of me and accused me of bad-mouthing William Snook to Sam Stratford. I will have put I will swear down on the lives of every single member of my family I wasn't bad mouthing him. And Robert Bray drives to Greater Anglia. First of all, Mr. Bray, you ever take a photo of me again, and I swear to God you won't have a fucking job. And that is pr proper shoot. And it's bad mouth him to no fucker. And then we've got all of his fucking cronies. Frank Richards, named and shamed. You want to fucking stick up for him? You go stick up for him. You want to go put your head up his ass? Go put it up his ass. I don't give a fucking shit. Mm -hmm. Then you've got bleed Mike Williams. Yeah, I'll come to Wigan, pal. You want to knock me out? My chin's right here. Come take me on. I'll just get fucking back up and say, please, sir, can I have another? Mm -hmm. Who else am I missing off of his fucking cronies list? Are you done? No. <laughs> and I almost forgot about you. Ian Furness. See, now Ian I didn't have a problem with. 
I knew you were Fred and Scott. No problem. Then you start bad mouthing a friend. I say friend. I don't know what to make of him anymore. And all I told you, Furnace, was not the place to put it on here. And you banned me for two weeks for getting involved. And then you banned me entirely. And then I find out you're part of the bad mouthing. Pop kettle black. There are so many I could go on and on. Callum Coughlin. I remember you from Carlisle. I didn't forget. I don't forget. I don't forgive. I will tell you all now. I put two offers on the table in August to William Snook to end it. He didn't bother replying to a single one. So as far as I'm concerned, offer rescinded. I will never ever forgive him, his dad, his friends, ever. And now, William Snook represents an insignificant part of my life. As far as I'm concerned, you didn't happen. You want to go around accusing me of harassing you when it's you that's been harassing me? You go ahead. We both know the truth and you know as well as I do what you've been doing. You want to make yourself out a hero? You make yourself out a hero. But as far as I'm concerned, 2013, you don't exist to me. And nor does any of your friends. Because I'm now looking forward to 2013. I ain't looking back to you. I, sp I spit on what you did to me and your friends. But 2013 will be a better year. Because we're going to ignore people like that. And we're going to look forward to the future. We're going to look forward to all these great places we're going to go. And I hope that every single person here will join me. Speaking of which, proper worst TOC over here. By way, talking to shit about that turbo stuff, but we are going to end it right here because I've probably gone on for far too long. It has been absolutely enjoyable doing this QA video diary for you people, it's been an absolute pleasure doing the video diary for you people. I want to thank each and every single person who watched, I want to thank each and every single person who liked, commented, did everything else as well, and most of all. I'm going to thank Alex Dobbs for appearing in one. I'm going to thank Jake Neal. I'm going to thank my brother Simon right there. I'm going to thank everybody else who took the time, came to say hello, all that. I tell you now from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. It is time to end the Q&A right there. I will see you in 2013 when I do Hawley and Red Hill. Good night.